What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Simply Hawkward Reviews, where we take a game, any game, any comic, any movie, anything like that, we break it down into pros and cons and let you know whether or not you should buy it or just not waste your money on it. Uh, my name is Von Hyden, today I'm going to be talking about Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, I am a big, big Mass Effect fan, so I'm super stoked for Mass Effect Andromeda to come out. Um, and honestly, to get really into it, I think it's good, it does have some issues, but not Nothing like a couple like nothing a couple patches can't solve um, for the most part a couple things I'd like to touch on first um, there are like issues with the character customization a lot of it a lot of the riders that you can make are gonna end up ugly honestly um, I like the male riders like original appearance I think he looks fine so I was okay with it plus in my opinion, he kind of looks like Nathan Drake. Well, I mean, not really, but he, he somewhat looks like Nolan North, and he sounds a lot like Nolan North, which is kind of weird considering it's not him. Um, but I was very okay with it, so I decided to just do the male rider. Um, the female rider, I didn't play. I haven't played. Um, but from what I understand, it's probably not that easy to make a cool one either as well um for the most part some other things i'd like to get into are there is a lot of bugs in this game there are a lot of bugs in this game um there's definitely the walking animations you guys see that are super janky you see the the facial animations i have had the the bugs where my like the glitches where my face has turned inside out and all sorts of weird stuff yes those exist yes uh bioware has talked about how they're gonna patch them and in my opinion, honestly, it's kind of ridiculous that they, like, didn't patch them initially. Andrea Renee, um, who's pretty big in games journalism, if you guys know, I'd recommend following her on Twitter. She's at Andrea Renee. Um, she talked about it and said that it's nice that, uh, it's nice that Bioware is going to put in the effort to fix all these glitches, but it's annoying that early adapters like us, people who really love the Mass Effect universe and bought it, like, right when it came out, aren't getting the best version of the game which I definitely agree with that's definitely something that like annoyed me honestly um, if you're a big Mass Effect fan or if you're just like you can uh, get over it it I would definitely recommend it this game is a great game it's a lot of fun for those who are like really big into how many hours a game can get you this game I'm I've put easily 50 to 60 hours into this game and I am only like a decent portion through like 50 to 60 percent done um, To be honest, I have not got to the ending But from what I have seen of the story I put so much time into this one game and it's honestly like I have put so much time into it that I felt like Doing a review would be okay because I've seen most of the game I've played most of the game. I haven't got to the ending yet, so luckily I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. But honestly, from what I have experienced, it is a great game. I would I would recommend getting it. But if you guys are big into like bugs and you don't want to like watch this amazing glitchy goodness, don't get it. There's there's no reason to. Um the story I find like it's really great, but I do agree with a lot of people when they say that they just didn't take risks with it, which is definitely true. They didn't take really any risks with this story. They really could have. They could have done some really interesting things. Um, what they did do was with like Exaltation was was really interesting. But honestly, I kind of saw it coming. Like it's it's nothing that I haven't seen before. Um, I'm not gonna ruin it and tell you what it is. Um, but it's definitely weird. Since I'm already in the story, I'd like to talk about the biggest part of any story, and to me, that's the villains. Um, the Ket and the Archon, great villains. They're they're really interesting. Sometimes they're they're a little bit bland, honestly, uh, because they're just like an empire of aliens that came into the Helios cluster. Um, it's very interesting. I I enjoy the Archon as a villain, and once you guys learned about Exaltation, it makes it all worth it, and it totally makes the the Kets basically the cat's reasoning through all this it it makes sense but it's very odd they're really good villains but they're no Saren. it's not Saren. it's not the collectors it's not the reapers it's nothing like that those are top-notch villains that i think a lot of games should include um i mean obviously not like carbon copies but something very similar to those but 
the Archon and the Ket are good enough. Um, since I'm already talking about, like, the Ket, I might as well talk about the Angara. Uh, the Angara is the other version of, like, new alien species you see in the, in the Andromeda Galaxy. And, in my opinion, their culture, their lore, everything is great. The only big issue that I have with the Angara is their look. The Angara look really fucking weird. Like... If I'm being honest, the Angara look like a catfish that got hit with like a frying pan. They just look sincerely odd, especially when you uh, when you're talking to Liam and Jaw later on, and they're switching armor. You get to see what the Angarans look like underneath their armor, and they look odd. They have like these weird like they kind of have like moobs, like some middies, but they're not. They're like bone and they stick out. It kind of like the Angaran with their shirts off honestly kind of look like the alien from Super 8. If you guys haven't seen Super 8, really good sci-fi movie. I would recommend it. But they look fucking weird. And I definitely think that Bioware could have been way more creative with the Angarans. Um, but something I would like to talk about that they did get really creative with and it definitely paid off was more guns more armor the amount of guns and armor that's in this game is amazing and it's just it's unprecedented it wasn't seen in a mass effect game before this um and i'm so glad they have it and they basically like for the most part eliminated heavy weapons which is really nice because it, it makes you like you can't resort to just like a cane when it comes to a boss fight you can't like shoot a nuke there's no grenade launchers in anything like that you really have to like choose the way you want to do combat which combat is also one of the best part of this game too because you're no longer like etched it's no longer etched in stone you don't come in and you're an infiltrator you are like an engineer or any of these things um, you get to really just choose what you want to be, which I think is fantastic. For the most part, I chose to chose to be an infiltrator, like all together. Um, I have like made small adjustments in the powers and the abilities that my character uses. Like I use the the haste ability, I believe is what it's called. Or I think it's called the uh, supercharge. I can't really remember honestly. But um, I use my guns a lot and it basically supercharges your guns so they do more damage and they increases their fire rate, their reload rate, um, all that good stuff. So they, basically like the combat allows you to tailor what you want to do. Like if you want to be long range sniper, you go for it. There's an abundance of snipers. If you want to get in close to the shotgun, you can do that and you have abilities that can be specifically tailored to just you using a shotgun which I felt was kind of annoying in the Mass Effect games beforehand because they were all strictly cover based, but in this it is not. Um, you can go and cover, it's, you should go and cover, but staying in cover the longest time possible should not happen because you should be getting around. The jump jet is an amazing addition. Now you can get above enemies, you can get to higher ground without actually needing the terrain. You can just shoot up in the air and do a brief hover and basically like snipe an enemy from behind cover. I think the jump jet was an amazing addition to combat. It's just fantastic. Other than that, I would really like to get into some other things. Um, honestly, one of my favorite things about this is that Ryder seems like it's that he or she is their own character. I mean, it is my rider. I choose the decisions that they make. But for the most part, it seems like this ad this rider exists in a universe that actually, like, with Shepard, I felt like I created the universe. With Ryder, I feel like the the universe already existed. I was just expand. I was I was expanding it. I was basically choosing specific things I wanted this rider to be. So, like, if you ever check your codex, you can actually see how your rider is it tells you like oh he's sarcastic and stuff like that and since they don't have these like uh they're not military based like sure they might have been with the alliance but they're not military personnel they have so much more personality than i believe shepherd ever had um especially because they re removed the morality system so you're no more paragon and renegade you just choose who you want to be and i think that's fantastic especially because i feel like i can make some of those more renegade like badass options and i don't feel like an asshole which is great because i wanted to make my rider a certain way and i got to make him that way and it feels like he exists in a universe that's his own and it's kind of like playing through a linear story i like i didn't create everything i got to add small parts but it seems like rider is his own character which i really really enjoy for the most part 
Um, some of my favorite things about like that and Ryder is that like when I make a sarcastic option, he really goes all out with the sarcasm. Like I was uh, talking to one of the Archons like later on in the story, you'll see it. Um, but I was talking to one of the Archons like priestesses in a way. Um, and like the sarcastic option, like they're basically sitting there telling me that like the Archon's going to kill me and I'm going to have no chance. And uh, basically he's like, you can fucking try. He, he basically tells them that he's going to wipe them out. And like, there is a lot of curse words in this, which I have like cussing and stuff. I have no issue with that. I think it's fantastic. It's a great way to show emotion with these characters. Basically, like I had this instance where he was like, my rider, I chose the sarcastic option. And he was like, I will fuck you up. And I thought that was amazing because in the other Mass Effect universes, sure, you had um, you had Shepard, Fem Shep, or Male Shep. Um, you had them, and when you chose the Renegade options, they were more kind of like they were kind of just a dick. They were a tyrant. They were like basically just a bad person. But now, when you choose these more Renegade options, it makes you seem more like a badass than uh, basically like a tyrant, which I totally love because that is kind of what I want to see out of my rider. I wanted to make him and. I wanted to make him basically this lovable badass and it absolutely like I got to make my rider that way. Um, I would like to briefly touch on because a lot of people have been talking about it. The characters in this game are fantastic. A lot of people said they fell short in the end like they weren't memorable characters. That's kind of bullshit. Um, Drac is by far the most memorable Krogan I've ever seen. He is literally like the epitome of what Krogan can be. He is the oldest Krogan known. And, like, Rex was amazing, Grunt was amazing, these are both amazing characters, but Drac is amazing in a different way, because he actually cares, and he's knowledgeable, he's wise, he's not just, like, the blood-hungry, like, Krogan that we've seen before, which I really, really enjoy, Vetra's awesome, Liam's awesome, um, PB is just this really odd Asari that, honestly, I feel like you haven't seen much before, like, Liara was a great Asari, but... She was kind of a static character for me. Um, she was always like very monotone and everything. And PB's not. She has a lot more depth. And I feel like people are like, because their love of these old characters, they're kind of looking over, like just completely glancing over how fantastic the characters in Mass Effect Andromeda are. Sure, some of them are pretty lackluster and annoying, but others are awesome. I love that like Callow and... Uh, like, Callow has feuds with Gil and everything. It's just fantastic. I feel like these characters exist in a universe that's already been, ex like, hasn't been explored, is what I should say. Um, And I love that I get to explore this universe, and it's not all about just, like, me fighting this upcoming, like, invasion, which, which I'm totally fine with. Love the original Mass Effect trilogy, but... I just, I really enjoy the feel of Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, basically, I would totally recommend anybody buy this. If you guys are big into graphics and you do not want to see glitches, definitely don't. It's not worth it. But if you guys like this video, make sure you click that like button down below. Make sure you subscribe for all of our upcoming content. We post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, it helps us out a bunch if you click that like button and leave comments letting us know how we did, how you feel about Mass Effect Andromeda, and anything else. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check out some of our other videos. You're going to have one linked right there. We are always this awkward and always this awesome. So I hope you guys have a great day.